a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. This episode explores whether our generations are planting seeds for the future or merely reaping what's left from the past. Are we building a legacy of prosperity or setting up future generations for financial struggle? This ancient wisdom, hailing from an era well before our current economic structures and even the concept of economics itself, remains as relevant today as it was thousands of years ago. But the pressing question arises, are we truly embodying this guiding principle in our modern society? For the first time since the Industrial Revolution, it appears that successive generations are not destined to surpass their parents in wealth. This shift, occurring across most developed economies, marks a significant departure from past expectations, where it was almost a given that each generation would live better than the last. Historically, parents have expected their children to enjoy a better quality of life than they did. Yet today, this expectation has been replaced by uncertainty, with many young professionals only hoping to match their parents' lifestyle, rather than exceed it. Challenges abound for younger generations striving for financial security, finding stable employment, acquiring affordable housing, starting families, and planning for retirement have all become more daunting tasks compared to decades past. This struggle is juxtaposed against a backdrop where the global wealth has increased, yet the distribution of that wealth has become increasingly skewed. What lies at the root of this paradox where a richer world produces poorer generations? Is there an underlying systemic issue that can be addressed? Or is this trend set to continue, relegating each new generation to lesser financial prospects than their predecessors? Additionally, one might wonder if this economic shift even matters in the grand scheme, considering wealth ultimately transfers upon death. Consider the demographic dynamics. Is it advantageous to be born into a large cohort where competition is fierce, or a smaller one with fewer competitors? Conventional economic theory might suggest the latter, proposing that reduced competition for resources, jobs and housing would benefit individuals. However, examining the baby boomers challenges this notion. Despite being part of the largest demographic explosion in history, they have accumulated significant wealth. This phenomenon, according to demographer David Willett, suggests that a larger cohort might actually wield greater influence over public policy and market dynamics ultimately benefiting from collective bargaining power. Throughout their lives, baby boomers adapted their political influence as their needs changed, initially supporting policies like affordable education and strong social welfare systems. They shifted focus towards lower taxes and reduced business regulations as they reached peak earning years. Such shifts reflect a broader trend where economic policies are often tailored to benefit the most influential voter demographics at any given time. The evolution of housing markets offers a stark illustration of these shifts. From the 1950s, where homes were affordable and often less costly than a family car, to today, where real estate represents a major investment and a cornerstone of personal wealth. This transition has not only changed the landscape of personal finance, but also highlighted the growing divide between those who can afford to invest in real estate and those who are priced out of the market. Furthermore, as we delve into the housing affordability crisis, it's clear that this issue extends beyond individual financial security to impact broader economic stability. High real estate prices limit where people can live and work, affecting their ability to participate in the economy and, by extension, the economic health of cities and nations. The intergenerational wealth divide further complicates these dynamics. With a significant portion of wealth concentrated among older generations, Younger individuals face increased barriers to economic entry, whether it's buying a home, landing a good job or starting a business. This concentration of wealth not only affects individual opportunities, but also has broader implications for economic growth and innovation. Addressing these disparities may require contentious solutions like wealth and estate taxes, which, while potentially effective, face significant opposition from those who have benefited most from the status quo. This resistance highlights the complex interplay between economic policy and generational equity, raising questions about the fairness and sustainability of our current economic trajectory. Financial landscape that all generations can thrive in, or if we're setting the stage for a cyclical struggle with wealth. What legacy are we creating and how can we ensure it benefits not just today's population, but future generations as well?